Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bell ringer. And this There's Brad. Thank <laughs> you. 
two favorite songs. Good afternoon and thank you for coming today as we gather to honor Captain Bill White for 24 plus years of inspiring devotion to our country. I'd like to extend an especially warm welcome to Captain White's wife, Shelly, his sons, Joe, Jack, and Danny, and special surprise all the way from Syracuse, New York, his parents, uh, Don and Helen, were able to join us today, so welcome. <laughs> Appreciate having you here. are vividly aware of the sacrifices that Captain White has made in the service of our country. I'm sure he'd prefer a retirement ceremony in the deck of an aircraft carrier, but I think <laughs> it's certainly fitting here at USAA, a place that's so dedicated to serving the military and its members. So our Navy is far better off for your service, and we're happy to have you on the USAA team. Today we're very pleased to have Vice Admiral John Byrd, United States Navy, retired to join us as our guest speaker. Admiral Byrd joined USAA in February of 2013 as Senior President of Military Affairs. His team is responsible for planning and directing the Military Affairs and Membership Development Program. Uh, they serve as a face of USSA for potential outreach and relationship building to influence, educate, advise, and gain insights. Prior to joining USAA, Admiral Byrd served for 35 years in the Navy before retiring in October of 2012 as Vice Admiral and Director of Navy Staff. His earlier assignments included Commander, United States Seventh Fleet, Director of Operations, Plans, and Logistics at United States Joint Forces, Commander Submarine Group 7, Commander Submarine Group 8, and Commanding Officer at USS Scranton, SSN 756. In 1977, he graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. He also holds a Master of Science in Engineering Management from Catholic University of America and has completed the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Seminar 21 in Foreign Affairs, International Relations, and National Security. John has been married to his high school sweetheart, Nani, for 32 years, and they have two grown children. Jack and Elizabeth were both UVA engineering graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral John Byrd. There is no finer calling than serving one's country. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Welcome, and thank you for attending uh, this simple, lovely, but very significant ceremony. Your attendance speaks volumes to the importance and meaning of a career, a career serving one's country. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. It's particularly uh, powerful when you see the family and the parents show up for this ceremony. It's my distinct privilege and honor to congratulate and celebrate Captain Bill White, a man of character and accomplishment who's retiring after 25 years of dedicated Naval service. Now to be honest, when I was first contacted about the event, I was simply informed that Bill was having a surprise retirement. <laughs> and so, several of those here at USA over the last few years, I was shocked and greatly disappointed. But then I was informed, no, it was for his 25 years of naval service. <laughs> so, surprise retirement. <laughs> We're here to recognize Bill for his many contributions, which in their own unique way have made our Navy stronger, more capable force in these incredibly challenging times of questionable national security. You can't begin to capture what 25 years of naval service, the scope and breadth means in words. But I think the essence of today's ceremony and its meaning is captured in my opening quote. You all know about those simple but very powerful 10 words that are prominently displayed, etched on the marble gateway and D courtyard inside this headquarters. There can be no finer calling than serving one's country. Is what we're all about today, to pay tribute to a man who chose to accept a calling to serve his country. He did not do it for money, awards or recognition, but just the simple fact that he saw it as his duty, and of course his strong desire to serve a cause greater than himself. He was willing to do so even if it meant putting his life on the line, thus embodying the very noble principle of service before self. Now while I certainly could talk for hours on end about the significance of Bill's career and his accomplishment, I'm very mindful of the Lincoln Caesar rule. Just over 150 years ago, Abraham Lincoln gave a speech of about two minutes to a very disinterested audience who really didn't like him very much. 
That speech, the Gettysburg Address, will be remembered and hailed as one of the greatest of all time. 1900 years earlier, Julius Caesar spoke to a much smaller group of close friends for just over two hours, and at the end they killed him. <laughs> Keeping that in mind, I keep my remarks brief, not that I want you to remember them for all eternity, I don't want you to kill me. I first had the pleasure of meeting Bill shortly after arriving at USA since we both came aboard about the same time in 2013. I quickly learned that we both share a common alma mater, the United States Naval Academy, and of course the Naval career. What I also learned as quickly was that Bill White is a man of impeccable character. That is his character more than anything that has served him well in uniform and all endeavors and continues to serve him well here at USAA and of course our members by extension. John Paul Jones, one of the most famous of American sailors of the American Revolutionary War, captured the essence of character in his famous letter, The Qualifications of a Naval Officer. He said, it's by no means enough that an officer of the Navy should be a capable mariner. He must be that, of course, but also a great deal more. He should be as well a gentleman of liberal education, refined manners, punctilious courtesy, and the nicest sense of personal honor. He should be the soul of tact, patience, justice, firmness, kindness, and charity. I think, as we all can agree, this captures Bill White perfectly. Although when it comes to refined manners and patience, Shelly, Joe, Jack, and Danny may have a different take. <laughs> like that later. Let me highlight some of Captain White's military accomplishments. He is, as I said, a fellow Naval Academy grad, graduating much later than me in 1990. He then went to Pensacola, Florida, my hometown, to train as an F-14 Rio. I assume your, your call sign was Goose. No? <laughs> okay, snack, but that's not bad either. He spent 10 years flying on active duty, the carrier-based F-14 Tomcat, one incredible fighter jet, including missions over Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iraq, and serving as a Navy ROTC instructor at Duke University. Upon leaving active duty, he commenced working in the financial service industry with great success until we were very fortunate and blessed to have him join us here at USA three years ago, where he continues to serve our military and displays that character. And while he left active duty, he continues his distinguished service to our country in the Naval Reserve, holding a variety of assignments of increasing responsibility, include staff leadership at the U.S. Second Fleet and at Fleet Forces Command. I know as a career Naval officer myself just how demanding and challenging a military career can be. So Bill, we thank you for answering the call to serve so capably for the last 25 years. But as anyone knows who has served, you don't do it alone. Without the loving support and shared sacrifice of a strong family, it just doesn't happen. So I want to recognize and provide my heartfelt thanks to Shelly, Joe, Jack, and Danny for your sacrifice as well and the full support and commitment you display. You too, Mom and Dad. Don and Helen, thank you for your support of Bill and getting him started. Your own service is worthy of recognition and we'll take time at the conclusion or till end of this ceremony to give the credit you deserve. Bill, a fellow Naval Academy grad, I think it's fair to quote from our alma mater, Navy Blue and Gold, as a way of wrapping up my comments. My favorite verse is not one that is often sung, in fact, I've never heard it sung, but I love the words in there, so I'll state, and they're appropriate for the occasion. Four years together by the bay, where the seven joins the tide, then by the service called away, we scattered far and wide. But still, when two or three shall meet, old tales be retold. From the lowest to the highest in the fleet, we pledge the blue and gold. Okay, Bill, now thinking back to read points, a little quick trivia. What's up? Fidelity. You can finish, and obedience is down on his belt buckle, but not bad. <laughs> Bill, thank you so much for your service and contribution to our country. We can never thank you enough. We're so very glad that this ceremony is not a departure but just a closure to a very significant chapter and an opportunity to congratulate, honor, and thank you and your family. Bravo Zulu, shipmate, and congratulations on a career so very well done.
So what I'm going to read is, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that Captain William Sweeney White, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Navy on the first day of October, 2015. Congratulations. Also have a certificate of appreciation for service in the armed forces of the United States of America, Captain William Sweeney White, United States Naval Reserve. I extend to you my personal thanks and sincere appreciation of the grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history through the devotion to duty and the spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for those who will follow in your footsteps, and for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done, my best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Barack Obama, Commander in Chief. USAA and Life Company, we wanted to extend um, some, just a small pleasantries to you. Uh, this is a, a small token. We have a bigger gift that couldn't get um, to Texas right after um, Thanksgiving on Cyber Monday. But, uh, it, is, uh, it is coming, and on behalf of the USA team, we wanted to extend uh, some really nice uh, cufflinks. Uh, <laughs> Shelly, if I could ask you to come up uh, with the boys and, and Don and Helen, uh, you're certainly welcome to come on up front. Please. Proud of up here. We need to get the, get the heat up. So Shelly has earned grateful appreciation for her unselfish, faithful, and devoted service during her husband's naval career. Her unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. I'd like to read to you something called the Wife's Watch. While her sailor answered the call from sea, she stood on the shore fighting down the fear that he would not return. In his absences, he has had to deal with car repairs, home maintenance, financial worries, children's injuries, and illness. All these and more she has taken in stride so that her sailor could proudly serve our nation. Today, the sideboards are posted and the boatswain stands ready to pipe. And as she has for so many years, the sailor's wife stands waiting on the shore. Soon the pipe will sound and her sailor will come ashore for the last time. His watch stands relieved, so too does hers. We gratefully honor her courage and steadfastness and offer our best to both of them for the new life they begin now. over 25 years of active service and naval reserve service, your father has ended an honorable, uh, has ended an honorable and faithful service to his country, and his efforts are sincerely appreciated. Such a rich and rewarding career reflects a strong commitment to the principles of freedom and democracy, and the belief that they must be upheld at any cost. That type of total commitment is not possible without the full support of the entire family. Although you may never have to carry out a military order or deploy to hostile waters. Your loyalty and steadfast support of your father's career can rightly be viewed as service to your country. That loyalty and dedication were significant courses of strength for your father during arduous duty and exemplified the highest traditions and patriotism. in the Navy, all branches of the military. And one thing today we're going to talk about real quickly is the history of the shadow box. According to some accounts of naval history and tradition, when a sailor retires and is departing the ship for the last time, 
It's considered bad luck for the sailor's shadow to touch land before he does. Thus, the sailor's shipmates would construct a sturdy box handcrafted of the finest materials in which to display mementos of the sailor's accomplishments, thereby symbolically creating a shadow of the sailor. The box safely contains the sailor's shadow until he is safely ashore, at which time the shadow box can be given to the sailor in the presentation ceremony. Historically, when a sailor would join a ship's crew, he would join that ship for his entire career. During the sailor's voyages to ports of call around the world, he would collect many trinkets, souvenirs, and reminders of his travels. Naturally, as space aboard a ship is limited, <coughs> trinkets, souvenirs, and reminders of his travels were uh, small. When the sailor piped ashore for the last time, his shipmates saw to it that a special ceremonial box was constructed for him. The box would hold all the possessions that he'd been collected during those many voyages. It would simultaneously symbolize the sailor's career and time aboard ship. Ideally, a shadow box serves not only as a reminder of achievements and accomplishments, but also as a summation, a culmination of a career. A shadow box should enable a stranger, glancing at its contents, to gain a substantial understanding of the owner's past service and achievements. Captain White will now be presented with a shadow box and a U.S. flag by Kenneth Sutton, Michael Holly, and Jackie McIntyre. <laughs> now this shadow box the shadow box represents a summary of Captain White's career, highlighting his career and decorations. It also houses the flag provided to him by the United States Navy as recognition of his service to our nation. This flag was flown over the USA Home Office on Veterans Day, November 11, 2015, and embedded in the shadow box to represent the culmination of his military career and represent his continued service at USAA. To all of you, especially those of you I know, as I look around, there's a lot of veterans here, and a lot of folks who did a lot more than me in service, and and I appreciate everything that you did, and everything you continue to do for our country. Uh, th these are ceremonies that I think mark, especially for those that are, are still serving and those who served. It's a it's a reminder of all the folks you served with, you know, whether it was your dad. Brooks, I know, who served for a very long time, 30 years in the Navy Reserve, or your comrade for all of your service, and to those who uh, have gone before us and aren't here to join us. I really appreciate it, and I hope that it means as much to you uh, as it does to me, especially for those very specific reasons. This is why we're here. It's our mission. It's who we serve, and it's for the families and for 
those who served and continue to serve. I, I just I wish all of them and all of you the best, and thank you for, for being here today. It means a lot to me. Thanks. <laughs>